Hello everyone, just a quick disclaimer before we get started. I don't claim that my builds are the best in the game, and I'm sure there are better ways to optimize some of them, but be aware that I do tend to get my builds at least endgame viable. This includes things like arbitration, steel path, idle on hunts, etc. Now that this is out of the way, these timestamps have been left here and in the description for your convenience. Feel free to skip around, but I'll start with the basics first just in case people don't know how to play this frame. So starting with the stats, armor is 275 for prime and 250 for non-prime. In terms of damage reduction, this is 47.8% and 45.5% respectively. Honestly, because of the way damage reduction from armor values is calculated, there is not much reason to get one over the other for this. For energy, we have 130 for prime, 120 for non-prime. This puts you at 195 and 180 energy at max respectively. For health, you're looking at 150 for both. This is 450 at max. For shield, you're looking at 120 for prime, 100 for non-prime. This puts you at 360 and 300 at max, respectively. Shield stat doesn't really matter since most people try to lower it anyway for the shield gate. For sprint speed, you're looking at 1.05 for prime and 1.0 for non-prime. Sprint speed doesn't particularly matter for Wukong, especially a small number like this. In terms of acquisition, regular Wukong is obtained from the Tenno Lab in the dojo, while Wukong Prime has been vaulted, so you'll need to dust off some old relics or pay someone a pretty penny for it. Moving on to his abilities, starting with the passive. After taking fatal damage, Wukong automatically uses one of his mastered survival techniques. These techniques can only be invoked three times per mission, so the techniques they mention happen when he drops his ear health, and the buffs are Primal Forces, Heavenly Cloak, Cosmic Armor, Monkey Luck, and Sly Alchemy. Primal Force gives you 300% elemental damage for 60 seconds. Heavenly Cloak gives invisibility for 30 seconds. Cosmic Armor gives you invulnerability for 30 seconds. Monkey Luck gives you bonus loot on enemies you kill for 60 seconds. And Sly Alchemy makes orbs you pick up give 4 times the amount. He is only able to activate 3 out of the 5 of these in a mission, which are determined when you spawn. There's no way to know what buffs you'll get until the first is activated by looking at the icons. Moving on to his next ability, Celestial Twin. Shedding part of himself, Wukong creates a twin to fight by his side. Attack at range and the twin will melee. Pull a blade and the twin will lay down covering fire. Use again to command the twin to attack a target with increased damage. So just as it says, if you use a melee, it uses range and vice versa. However, if you use your fourth ability, he also does, even though that counts as a melee. It's worth noting the twin doesn't take self-stagger when using explosive weapons, and as it mentions in the description, if you activate this ability again on an enemy, it forces the twin to attack the target at double damage. This ability has some functionality with his second and third ability as well, which I'll get into when I go over that ability. If you hold the ability, it actually makes the twin go away, which is really good in case you need something to stay alive. In terms of modding for this ability, Drain is affected by ability efficiency, health multiplier is affected by strength mods, and boosted damage is not affected by mods and only applies to targets you tell the twin to attack. In terms of calculating health, it is your health times the multiplier. So if I have 1110 health and 200% strength, this will give a 4 times multiplier, resulting in the twin having 4440 health. Moving on to his second ability, Cloudwalker, evaporate into a cloud of mist and float through the battlefield, dazing any enemies encountered while healing Wukong and his twin. So this ability basically lets him fly. While flying, you heal yourself and the twin a percentage per meter traveled. Having a heal right into his kit really helps him as a tankier frame. When he comes out of the cloud, the twin appears near him, effectively allowing you to reposition the twin wherever you want. As he passes near enemies, enemies take a slight stun in which they are open to finishers. In terms of modding for this ability, Drain is affected by ability efficiency and does not have a drain over time. The duration that you are in the cloud is affected by ability duration, stun radius is affected by range, and health per meter is affected by strength. Additionally, the speed at which you move is affected by speed modifiers, but not things like sprint speed modifiers. Moving on to his third ability, Defy, Wukong and his twin become invulnerable and defy enemies to attack. All damage is captured, stored, and dealt back in a single furious strike of Wukong staff. Bonus armor is then granted relative to the damage captured. So as the description says, you taunt all enemies around you to attack you while going invulnerable for a short time. This also makes a twin do it as well. Absorbed damage is then multiplied and dealt back as impact damage, knocking down enemies hit by the staff. The damage dealt back is a guaranteed crit, dealing two times damage. 
The damage you receive is also put into an armor buff that goes up to 1500 bonus armor, which is really good to have this much armor from an ability. The armor buff lasts a set duration, and the ability can be recast even while active, but you will lose the current armor buff. In terms of modding for this ability, Drain is affected by ability efficiency, Time Invulnerable and Armor Duration is affected by Ability Duration, Damage Multiplier and Armor Multiplier is affected by Ability Strength, and the Swing Radius is affected by Range. Moving on to his fourth ability, Primal Fury, Summon the Iron Staff and Unleash Fury. So Wukong and his twin pull out the staff. It's a channeled ability, which means it drains energy over time as it's being used. The fact that it is an Exalted Weapon means it has its own mods. Just like a regular melee, Exalted Weapons have their own stance. For the stance on Iron Staff, you have your regular Not Moving Attack, which deals quite a bit of damage and has multiple hits within each press of the melee button. The last hit does quite a bit of damage, has good range, and hits multiple times, making it good for status procs. His attacks while moving deal not as great damage and doesn't hit nearly as many times, so I personally try to avoid using it. His blocking while attacking combo does a quick lunge with his staff forward, making it decent at closing the gap, but isn't great for damage. The blocking combo while stationary is pretty good, however it tends to knock enemies about, so I don't use it too much. For heavier targets that don't get stunned, this thing just deals a ton of damage if you're right up on the target, especially for the last hit. Lastly, the slams are just generic slam attacks. In terms of modding for this ability, you'll want efficiency for the drain and drain per second, as well as duration to lower the drain per second even further. Lastly, you'll want strength mods to increase the damage per hit. Moving on to his augment, starting with Celestial Stomp. Celestial Twin Augment holds a command the twin to perform a slam attack, suspending enemies in the air within 20 meters for 25 energy. So if you equip this mod, you can no longer unsummon your Celestial Twin. It replaces the hold press with a stun. The stun lasts 6 seconds, which is not affected by duration mods. The range is good at a stock 20 meters and is modifiable by range mods. Additionally, the drain is affected by ability efficiency. Moving on to his next augment, Enveloping Cloud. Cloudwalker augment, allies within 4 meters of the cloud become invisible to enemies for 14 seconds. So, allies near the cloud become invisible. This is a bit of a gimmick mod, but can be used in some niche scenarios, like where you'd maybe want to keep a rescue target from dying or something. It can also help carry people that can't take a hit without disintegrating by keeping them invisible. The stealth breaks when attacking and doesn't apply to Wukong, which can be kind of annoying, but he also has the cloud to work with. Moving on to his last augment, Primal Rage. Primal Fury augment, killing an enemy increases critical chance by 15%. They increase decays by 1% per second. So whenever you get a kill, you get extra crit chance on the staff up to 150% at max stack. This is multiplicative, not additive crit chance, which means the staff actually gets 62.5% crit chance at max stack. The crit chance decays slowly over time and is slowed by having more duration. The crit chance earned per kill is affected by ability strength. This is a good mod for the staff, as everybody knows crit chance is important to have on things. At this point in the video, I like to answer the question, is this frame still path viable? Can it run arbitrations? Is it part of the island hunt? I wouldn't personally use him on an Eidolon hunt, but Wukong is incredibly good. He can be brought to most content without an issue and has a built-in get out of death free card which makes him desirable on things like arbitrations you may not be comfortable with. He can also go through Steel Path pretty easily if you have him properly set up. So going into the first build, my Rage Monkey build, this build is designed to be tanky while also having a good melee setup for the Iron Staff. In terms of Helminth, you're going to want nothing really. You really don't need to replace anything to make him work well. In terms of Forma, you're looking at 1 Forma or 3 Forma depending on how much you want to get extra stats from the Exilus. You'll add 1 Matarai. Optionally, you can add 2 Zeneric, 1 to the Exilus. Going over the mods, starting with the Aura. So we're just using Steel Charge here because obviously increasing our melee damage is the best way to go. He completely relies on his Iron Staff for most of his output. I mean, obviously he could rely on other weapons, but I like to focus around the Staff because that's kind of what makes Wukong Wukong. Going into the next mods, we're using Umbral Vitality and Intensify together to boost our Strength and Health a ton. The reason why I don't use Umbral Fiber is for the same reason I mentioned in my other videos. The formula for damage reduction that comes from armor falls off immensely at higher numbers, which 
we are hitting with just our ability Defy. Defy gives us 1500 armor for free, so there is no point of getting more. We are pretty much already at a damage reduction cap in terms of diminishing returns. Next we have Gladiator Resolve, which basically just boosts our health a little bit, but the real reason why we're using this is for the actual set bonuses. So the Gladiator set gives 10% extra crit chance per combo multiplier, and it gives you an extra 10 for each mod that you're using. So as you can see, we're using four total, three on a weapon that I'll get into shortly. Next, we have Adaptation, just for a whole bunch of tankiness. This thing just gives us so much freaking damage reduction. You can't live without this. It's, it's unbelievably good for higher level content. Next, we have Prime Flow, just so we can bank a ton of energy, because we're not really using any efficiency mods and we're getting energy back from Hunter Adrenaline, which I'll get into soon. So we want to be able to have somewhere to put it because we're draining quite a bit of energy. Next, we have Prime Continuity. This is just so we can bring our Duration up a ton. Duration does a whole bunch of things for him. It makes his Cloud last longer. It makes his Defy Armor last longer. It makes his uh, Staff cost less energy per second. It does a whole bunch of things for him. It's really good to have Duration. There's no reason not to. Going into the next mod, which further proves my points for Prime Continuity, obviously... The decay is affected by uh, duration, so the more duration you have, the less the uh, the buff actually decays. So this is really important to have. Primal Fury basically just gives us a whole bunch of crit chance on his staff, which is like super necessary as his staff definitely isn't as strong as it once was. So we're just using this to augment it a bit. Next we have Hunter Adrenaline, which is obviously what we're pairing with Prime Flow. Basically, whenever we take a hit, we're getting energy back. This is super important. We need energy. We need energy for all of our skills. We need it to channel our main damage ability. This is how we are getting it back. He's super tanky. This works well on him, assuming you're taking a lot of hits. Lastly, this is the option slot. If you formed a Xenoric here and a Xenoric here, you can add a bit extra uh, power strength, which puts you from 155 strength to 170. It's just a little added bonus. It's totally not worth it. It's just a min-max thing. Do whatever the hell you want. In terms of Arcanes, we're going to be using Arcane Strike and Fury. Strike makes us swing the stick faster, and Fury makes the stick donk for more damage. That's pretty much how this goes. We want as much damage as we can push out of the stick. In terms of Misc Requirements, we obviously have the Staff build. We're using... Whoa. <laughs> we're using Condition Overload so we can ramp up damage easily on heavier targets by applying multiple unique status effects. Since this build is more geared towards Steel Path, I have chosen to do Viral Heat combo paired with my Condition Overload Primer I have as a secondary. More on that soon. Viral makes you do double damage with one proc to targets affected by it, and Heat reduces an enemy's armor by 50%, which will pair nicely on our secondary. Obviously, if you get more Viral procs, you get more damage, but we really only need one to be doing adequate damage even on things like Steel Path. In terms of Forma, you're going to add four Matterize, and don't replace any of the default uh, Naramans. Moving on to our secondary, we basically have our Condition Overload Primer. Typically, you'll want Steady Beam Weapons just to give as much status applications as possible in a good amount of time. I prefer things like the Tenant Sikron or Kuba Nucor for this. In terms of mods, just adding mods that increase things like Fire Rate, Status Chance, and Status Duration is ideal. Additionally, you're going to want to make sure you can get Corrosive and at least one other status that we're not getting anywhere else to maximize the staff damage. This allows us to hit a full Corrosive debuff, which gives a ton of armor strip, and when paired with a heat proc from the staff, it's a really good strip for the heavier targets. This makes Condition Overload do a ton of damage for our staff. Lastly, if we put all the Gladiator mods on our melee, we will be able to get those buffs on the staff. I don't know if this will be in the game forever, as DE actually recently made some changes to a Sentinel weapon that made this no longer work on them, specifically for this reason. So they may eventually remove it from this as well. Who knows? I mentioned this in the Baruch video as well. However, Wukong is in a very different situation where he really does need the extra crit to make his staff work in higher levels. In terms of Operator School... I would say Nariman is good for the power spike buff to ensure you pretty much never lose your combo on the staff. When playing with other people, it can be tough to hit enemies to avoid losing combo as we have to get within melee range while others can just kill everything at range. So a quick how to use. So the first thing you'd want to do is get into the thick of some enemies and press 3. This will give us some extra damage reduction to allow us to use our staff comfortably. 
From here, summon your twin, as enemies having an additional thing to shoot at other than you is usually pretty good. If you're just looking to generate extra energy through adrenaline first, you can hold off on summoning the twin. Next, switch to your secondary and you can bust out the staff. Now swing at everything to get your combo multiplier up. Once you've gotten some kills and your multiplier is up, you'll be doing pretty good damage. For heavier targets, you'll want to hit the trigger button to make your condition overload weapon shoot, as you don't need to unequip the staff to shoot. Once they are primed and ready, you can melee them and it'll do a ton of damage. So going into some quick gameplay, I show that you can mess up an Acolyte pretty easily without taking really any damage. I haven't had an Acolyte kill me yet as uh, Wukong, even without triggering the passive that he has. As you can see with full stack, you just hit him with that condition overload and then that makes short work of them with the staff. And then I show that you can obviously deal with some other heavier targets like heavy gunners, even in the steel path, it's really solid. Going into my next build is my Cloud Cloak build. This build is designed to just run through missions quickly. That's it. It can cloak teammates and rescue targets and things to have some added convenience, but yeah, I mean, it, it's pretty straightforward. It's just for the cloud. In terms of how much you're going to maybe want perspicacity, I mean, ciphers aren't exactly expensive, but it can make it convenient to have an auto hack built into a build that is designed to go through missions quickly. It's a rank 3 helmet ability, so it's not that big of a deal. In terms of Forma, you're looking at no Forma. Going over the mods, starting with the aura. We have power donation here because we don't need strength. Other people are going to need it way more than we do. This is just how it's going to be. Next, we have streamline because we want to bring down the cost of our uh, Cloudwalker a bit. Next, we have Augur Reach and Stretch, of course, because we want to try to get as much range as possible so we're able to cloak teammates, do a bunch of stuns, all that fun stuff with the cloud. Next, we have Overextended. Again, we really don't need strength, so might as well have this here. Constitution, so we can bring up our duration a bit. This obviously increases the duration of the cloud and also increases the duration of the invisibility on our teammates, so that's important as well as Prime Continuity for the same reasons. Next, we have Enveloping Cloud because we want to be able to cloak things. It's good for rescues. It's good at keeping our team alive. We might as well. And lastly, we have Augur Message to bring up our duration even further, and then Cunning Drift just to push our range uh, as far as possible, basically. In terms of Arcanes, you'll maybe want Arcane Energize and Arcane Guardian. Guardian is for the added tankiness uh, when out of the cloud, and Energize may help if your team is killing things. Going into the Operator School, I would say Xenuric is pretty good for energizing Dash. We're going to want to be able to give ourselves energies, so it'll pretty much be able to let us have uh, constant uptime on the cloud. In terms of how to use, I'm going to go into a quick gameplay of this being used for a Steel Path Rescue. It's super straightforward. Just meant to be fast. That's, that's literally it. So we get in, and we first give ourselves some energy, and then we use our auto hack ability just because we have it. It's there. I use my clone just so when I am hacking things, they basically have something else to shoot at, and sometimes my twin will just one-shot things around me, which can help. So basically from here, we just fly to the target. It looked like I got drained right there, but I actually don't. He is actually status immune while he's in the cloud, so that's a thing. I just give myself some more energy, and we go through here. And as you can see here, I abuse the auto hack without having a cipher. It's just, yeah, it's totally not necessary, but I have it. I might as well use it. Do it again, and this is where the target is. So as you can see, I press two, it cloaks him, and then we go to the extraction. We won't have to worry about him. Nobody can see him. They don't shoot what they can't see. And that is the end of that. Easiest steel path rescue you'll do. Going into my last build is my Monkey Slam build. This build is just designed to have a whole bunch of crowd control. In terms of how much you're going to want anything really, I recommend replacing the staff if you do. I use nothing and I still don't have any issues. In terms of Forma, you're looking at no Forma. Going over the mods, this is the same build as my Cloud Cloak build. It's You basically just use Cloud to get around uh, a bunch, which is why we're focusing on duration. The only difference is the Augment, 
or using the Celestial Stomp Augment to be able to stun everything. This is like basically just for interceptions and stuff where we just want things to stop moving. To make things short and simple, I'm just going to go over the stats. So the reason why I'm using so much duration is obviously just so we can get around with Cloud. Efficiency is just so we can kind of spam our Celestial Stomp relatively easily. We have max range because that brings our stomp up to 56 meters, which is pretty solid. I mean, stunning everything in 56 meters through walls and stuff, that, that's pretty solid. And of course, we have 10% strength because we're using power donation and overextended. Power donation because I'm sure other people will need the strength more than we do. That's pretty much how this goes. In terms of arcanes, you'll maybe want energized, but things aren't exactly always dying, so you may not get the proc. Guardian can help when things are not stunned temporarily, but again, this isn't totally needed since we have something like Defy. In terms of Operator School, you'll want Xeneric for Energizing Dash to replenish plenty of energy to spam the crowd control ability. So a quick how to use, you just get your guy out, get some enemies here, and you just hold one. That's pretty much it. That guy in the back was still, still up, that's fine. You get the idea. It's a pretty long range, and it's a good crowd control. That's all we're using this for. Okay, so going into an interception mission, as you can see, I just go to the first point, get my twin out, and it's done. And that's really it. Um, it just gives me enough free time to basically get all the points on a map. So I skip ahead a little bit, and as you can see, you just repeatedly stun things when they shoot at you. I occasionally use Defy when a lot of things are shooting at me, uh, just, you know, so I can get that extra armor bonus. It means that even though I'm at 450 health, I still have a decent amount of effective health because of all the armor. And that's it. You just hold your one whenever you want things to stop. It's really that simple. So that is the complete Wukong Guide. He's pretty good, and I can definitely recommend him. If you enjoyed the video, or helped in any way, please leave a like. And if you're looking forward to future content like this, subscribe and stay tuned. If I miss anything, or you'd like to leave some feedback, leave it down in the comments. I appreciate all the support, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.